So eventually Europeans went out all over the world establishing colonies and building empires from 1450 to 1648. And in this video, we're gonna consider why they did it and how they did it. So if you're ready to get them brain cows milked, well then let's get to it. So first, why did Europeans go out in this age of exploration to conquer lands and set up empires? Well, the classic answer is this. They did it for gold, for God, and for glory. So first let's talk about gold as a motivating factor for exploration. You know, silver was in there too, but you know, the point is they went out exploring because they wanted wealth. Boom, boom, shut up. Gorilla. Bean. Anyway, in order to understand this motivation, you have to know about something called mercantilism, which was the dominant economic system of Europe during this time period. The controlling idea behind mercantilism is that it saw the world's wealth as a pie, and that has two implications. First, there's only a fixed amount of pie. Therefore, second, if I want a bigger slice of that pie, that means somebody else has to get a smaller slice of that pie. And that makes sense when you realize that they measured wealth in terms of gold and silver. And of course, there's only a finite amount of gold and silver in the world, and so the goal of mercantilism then was to get as much gold and silver into the national coffers as possible. And so in order to do that, states had to maintain what was known as a favorable balance of trade. And that meant that a state needed to have more exports than imports, and it's easy to understand why. If a state is importing a lot of goods, then where is that gold going? It's going out of the state. But if the state is exporting a lot of goods to other places, then where is the gold going? It's coming into the state. Now, what does this have to do with European exploration? Well, to put it in proper academic historical terms, a metric buttload. During this period, European states began to recognize that establishing colonies was a sure means to getting more gold. Not only did colonies themselves have deposits of gold and silver, but they also provided raw materials which could be shipped back to the imperial state, made into goods, and sold right back to the colonial peoples. And if they're selling goods to the colonial peoples, what's coming back into the country? Any guesses? Yes, that's right, it's gold. So the point is, mercantilism was a major motivating factor for European exploration. And if you want an example of this, and I know that you do, then let me introduce you to my boy Jean-Baptiste Colbert, who was France's controller general and kind of the poster child for mercantilist policies. Colbert aimed to create policies in France that enabled French industry to create everything the people needed so they didn't have to import those goods from elsewhere. And in order to do that, he abolished domestic tariffs and enacted steep tariffs on other imported goods. And if you're scratching your head wondering what a tariff is, it's just a tax on imported Goods. So Colbert raised taxes on imported goods like a madman, and that means the French people will be more likely to buy French-made goods since they were cheaper. Additionally, under Colbert's guidance, France claimed a bunch of territory in North America, the most significant of which was Quebec and the Louisiana Territory. Now, briefly, the other thing we need to talk about under the heading of gold is the European demand for luxury goods from Asia. Elite Europeans had a craving for Eastern porcelain and spice and tea. But the problem was that the Muslim Ottoman Empire controlled the land routes over which those luxury goods would travel into Europe. Therefore, the prices of those goods were exceedingly inflated. That became a motivation for European states to try to find a sea route to Asia so that they could trade in that market on their own terms. Okay, now the second motivation for European exploration was God. And it's hard to overestimate just how much influence the Catholic Church and the later Protestant Church had over European states. Their culture and their faith were bound so tightly together that it was difficult to tell where one stopped and the other started. And so that made certain states want to spread Christianity into distant lands. Case in point, Spain. So by 14 they had completed the Reconquista in which they were able to drive Jews and Muslims from their land. And by the time of the Protestant Reformation, there was a desire to see Catholicism in the ascendant position over Protestantism, and that provided a motivation for the exploration via the sea. And as they found their way to the New World, they sent Jesuit missionaries to convert indigenous people. But you should know that many of them thought of the indigenous people as lesser humans and thus suitable for forced labor. And that way, Christianity became an instrument for control and subjugation in the hands of imperial states. But not all Jesuit Jesuits held that belief. For example, Jesuit priest Bartolome de las Casas mounted elaborate defenses on behalf of American Indians and worked to make their life under the imperial regime less harsh, a sympathy that he did not hold for the enslaved African people that would show up later. But we'll talk about that in another video. All right, third motivation for exploration, glory. The idea here is that European states were in competition with one another in terms of power. And once the establishment of empires became the scoreboard for state power, European states tried to grab as many of those points as possible. Okay, now these empires that were born out of European exploration were a new kind of empire, namely maritime empire. And that just means they were sea-based and not land-based, as so many empires in world history had been up to this moment. If you're going to build a sea-based empire, you're going to need new technology. And so let's talk about a few of the big tech advancements during this period. First were advancements in cartography, which is to say map making. Up to this point, maps, especially for navigating the sea, were kind of vague and in some cases inaccurate. But by this period, maps were becoming far more detailed and accurate, and thanks to the printing press, becoming widely accessible. 
accessible. Second were new kinds of ships. For example, the Spanish and the Portuguese developed the Caravel, which was very fast and highly navigable. Prior to this, ships kind of did like double duty, like they could carry cargo, but they also had to be able to be converted into warships as well. That meant that they didn't do either particularly well. But the Caravel was made only for shipping and trade, although they, you know, could be armed, but that wasn't their purpose. And these ships were fast because of new sail technology, namely the Latin sail. This was a triangular sail that could take on wind from any side, not just from the back like a square sail. Third were more accurate navigational instruments. For example, Europeans adopted the magnetic compass and the astrolabe from Muslim and Chinese navigators. The compass helped sailors to keep their direction true, while the astrolabe helped give an accurate reckoning of latitude. So all of that put together is how and why Europeans began exploring via the sea and establishing maritime empires. Now click right here to keep watching more videos from Unit 1 because baby, it's all there. If you need even more help, then click right here to grab my complete AP Euro review guide, which is going to help you get an A in your class and a 5 on your exam in May. Hey, I'll catch you on the flip-flop. Heimler out.